Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And um, as an acknowledged Milwaukee fanboy, sometimes I just have to try things out just, well, because they're a type of tool I like and it's got the Milwaukee name on it. That happened with this Milwaukee hammer. This is a little 12 ounce, but it's kind of a shorter handle if you compare it to say the longer 22 ounce Milwaukee hammer. Um, but I was playing around with one of these little tiny ones just to see if these things actually have use. They do, as a matter of fact, but I just like the feel in my hand and the look of the, you know, like as it, as it would work, of this little small 12 ounce hammer. So that's what happens. Anyway, I saw this uh, Milwaukee splitting axe. They also make a splitting hatchet that's um, 17 inches, 16 inches. Um, this one here is about 26 inches, you can see. It's... Uh, actually better than I thought it would be, and I have pretty low expectations, believe it or not. The first thing is when I picked it up, this thing weighs 5.9 pounds. That, that 5.9 pounds, that's six pounds essentially. That is huge. Uh, for some reference, here's a 3.3 uh, pound, a little shorter handle, um, Grand Forest Bruck splitting hatchet. Um, if I go to something bigger, let's see, how about this Still Forester's Axe, axe which actually does have um, a head that you can use for splitting. It's fairly narrow up front, but widens pretty fast, and it's got some good overstrike protection. This guy here, 4.7 pounds. So we're talking, you know, pushing close to a pound and a half more. And those pounds really add up. If you compare it to something classic, like the uh, oops, the typical kind of S-wing, this is almost identical in length, as you can see. Uh, definitely not a splitting ax. This thing, in fact, that's my big complaint. This just sl slams in like a knife blade and sticks. This is uh, three point, what do I have on that? 3.1 pounds. So you're talking about almost half the weight and this thing feels kind of heavy, um, but it does get, you know, fairly thin right here. And I have bent these things. In fact, this one looks a little bit bent, um, but they still are kind of an industry standard as far as full metal handled axes. This one has some kind of a cover, probably over a uh, metal sheath. Now that's the problem here. Apparently there are reports of these handles literally breaking inside. It's almost like a pipe, at least from the pictures. But how does it perform? Well, it actually performed very well. I was, I was kind of surprised. Uh, it is heavy throughout, whereas if you take a standard, like a splitting axe, I'm like, here's a Grand Force Brooks uh, splitting uh, axe, very large head. This is actually what a head designed to hit a uh, splitting maul or a splitting uh, wedge looks like. Um, it is not an axe head, uh, traditional axe heads. Those will break. Um, you need something really beefy like that. Look at all that metal in there. But anyway, something like this, one of the things you'll notice here uh, is just how fast that blade from uh, the bit up front, how fast it spreads. That's where the splitting comes in. It's designed to drive wood apart. I did go out and split a bunch of rounds with it. And honestly, it reminded me of this. This is a, uh, a 4.1 pound Fireside friend from Estwing, and these things are just great. Um, but I noticed some stuff, and so that's where I'm headed. First of all, I was striking. Um, I, I overstruck several times. What that means is I slammed um, just part of the bit was where I wanted, part of the edge, and I actually hit the frame of the axe. And I thought that's kind of weird. Why is that? You know, is there? First, the, the, there's something about the geometry that my placement is going to take a little bit more practice compared to some of the others that I'm, I'm used to. And I think it's the blade sits high, whereas a lot of the blades um, come down just a little bit lower. So I, I take some getting used to. It did split very well. It comes from the factory. Reasonably sharp. I mean, plenty sharp. Kind of surprised me. It does have 
um, kind of a unique geometry with kind of this trapezoid shape. That's totally fine. There are all kinds of different ways that you can design splitting axes and splitting hatchets. And I've done other reviews on, on some of them, including the cheapest one I could find on Amazon that actually works really well. I mean, there's not a lot to mess up, but it's possible. So you can see it's got an unusual head. This giant hole, I don't know what Milwaukee thinks you're going to do with this thing. Um, I guess hanging on the wall, maybe. By the way, the number on this is the 48229026, or 62, excuse me. And they call it the 26-inch splitting axe. I think it was a kind of a funny entry because splitting axes, first of all, um, a lot of people use wood splitters instead of splitting axes. So you, the problem with carrying one of these in your car, or your truck, or, you know, we carry them in our, in our, uh, our um, four-wheelers, this is not what you'd want to cut down a tree or chop up a tree that's across a trail or, um, you know, de-lamb things, make kindling. It does make kindling well if you already have small wood, but overall, I mean, it's really for rounds. You know, you cut a, like, get your chainsaw, cut the tree, into like 16 inch lengths is usually what I do, and then split them down into smaller pieces, quarters, thirds, something like that. That's where this comes into play. Um, you know, it's, it lives in the woodshed basically, but that's kind of an interesting place for one tool. However, you know, with the plastic handle, I don't know for sure uh, what's under there. I think from, like I said, it looked kind of like a pipe in the pictures, but if you go to the Milwaukee website and actually look, you can see images of broken handles. So I'm not sure that's dialed in. That really shouldn't happen, especially here. And this thing just weighs a ton. So my guess is that they worked on a principle called strength through mass. And literally the more material, the stronger it'll be, which is not a very good engineering thing, considering Fiskars and other companies make uh, hollow uh, fiberglass resin handles and they seem to hold up really well but the price it was about 45 bucks 46 bucks you can get them on you know at home depot um, and it's as long as the uh, handle doesn't break there's nothing wrong with the front end of this thing um, but it will cost you if you want a really good uh, splitting axe you know, you're going to get into $100 pretty easily, and you're going to have to uh, probably break $200 if you want a Grand Force Brooks. Fiskars is around $70, I think, when I last checked. $70 to $80 for their, their good splitter. But, again, I have a little trouble with some of their large-handled fiberglass tools. But, anyway, uh, if you got one, let me know what you think. And if you're interested in uh, more um, kind of edge tool uh, videos let me know because I have no trouble spending some dollars on these things just to try them out and with that Doc out